Hello, everybody. It's Miss Dana. Welcome back to our weekly story times. We took a little bit of a break, and I figured it'd be fun to start at the end of January to help us get through the winter, all those doldrums. We could do some fun things together again. Um, I really wanted to start off with science. That's why I'm in our folk room up here in the library. So I have a lot of room to spread out to show you all of the fun things that I have planned for you this week. So um, if you're ready for science, we are talking about the power of gravity. And I find gravity very fascinating. It's just, um, we have a lot of books that can show you um, a lot of pictures about how gravity works, but really it is the force that keeps us all down, holding us down on the earth. Miraculous. It's just, I don't even know exactly how it works, but if without gravity, we would just all float away into space. There wouldn't be any way we could stay standing here on earth. I have a lot of books that explain things. Me, Einstein is one of them. And he's the one that discovered a lot of things about gravity. Gravity is the reason why things fall down to the ground. Like when you go down a slide, you always go down. When you spill things at the kitchen table, things never fall up, right? It always falls down on the ground. And when you jump, you don't stay in the air and float. You always come down. And that's because of gravity. Gravity also keeps things working in space too. Gravity keeps the earth near the sun. And the sun can come up every morning because of gravity and go down every night. And also the moon is affected too. It keeps the moon up in the sky at night. There's the crescent moon right there. So we're gonna do a lot of fun activities. I have lots of books too, in case you wanna check out other things. There's a lot of beautiful picture books. This is one in particular that I really like about gravity. But we're gonna read a story first, as we always like to do. Gravity really is at play and works here for Cosmo. Cosmo is a dog and he decides to take a nap and he takes a nap on a skateboard. <laughs> that could be trouble, right? Especially if you're on a hill. Gravity will pull that skateboard down the hill. So he has quite a surprise, but it ends up being a good one. So let me get closer. Ooh, well, maybe not. Let me move this chair out of the way so I can get into the screen and you can see a little bit better. Cosmo Zooms by Arthur Howard. Every dog on Pumpkin Lane was really, really good at something. Lance was a fast runner and Elvis he was a loud howler. Ooh. Flip could catch any frisbee ever thrown, and Puddles could drool 11 hours in a row without stopping. Ugh. <laughs> Truly dog. Gracie was the best herder in town. You name it, she could round it up. See with all those bunnies? But then there was Cosmo. Cosmo couldn't run very fast or howl very loud or drool very much, but Frisbees, they wouldn't work either. They flew over his head. Oh, it would be so nice, he told his friend, Pearl the cat if I was good at something. Meow, how about catching mice, said Pearl, and then showing them to everyone. Cats love to do that. Ah, oh, I don't think so, said Cosmo. Meow, well, what about 
climbing trees. Trees? I'm a dog, said Cosmo. Give me a break. Oh, he was so discouraged. He flopped down in the sun and tried to think of something he could be good at. And it made him sleepy. What's going to happen? You know now, right? Just before he closed his eyes, a bicycle rolled past. No one was riding it. Hmm, bicycles don't move by themselves. That's funny, he said. Then a mailbox zipped by. What? Wait a minute, mailboxes don't move? What's going on here? That's weird, he said. But then Cosmo found the reason why he was moving. It wasn't all the other things, he was the one. He was on a skateboard. He looked down, uh-oh. He tried to step off, but he swerved. He tried again and swooped. Down Pumpkin Lane, he raced. He's on a hill. So the gravity is pulling him down on this skateboard. He's never skateboarded before. I hope he's going to be okay. Do you think so? Let's see. Oh, he went over bumps. He went under people's feet. He went faster and faster and faster. Oh no. How do you stop this thing? Cosmo yelped right before he plowed into Mr. Dudley's hydrangeas. Oh no, I hope no one saw that, he said. But somebody did. Who's there in the background? It's Gracie. Not only did Gracie see him, but everybody did. Gracie herded them all around Cosmo. Lance, being the fastest, was the first to speak. Wow, 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 he barked. Woo, 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 howled Elvis. Flip was so excited that he dropped his frisbee, and Puddles was impressed too. You could tell because he stopped drooling. <laughs> Cosmo must feel pretty good, right? So, Meow, you finally found something you're good at, said Pearl. How does it feel? Cosmo thought about the close calls, the near misses, the swoops, the swerves, and even the hydrangeas. Wow, he said. It feels really great. What do you think he's going to do? You think he's going to try again? He did. He zoomed down Pumpkin Lane again and again. Look, he took Pearl on there with him. She doesn't look too happy about it, though. It's too fast. Ooh, but he went again and again and again. And look, he's really getting good at the tricks, too. He's doing a handstand on the skateboard. Sometimes gravity really works out. This is a nice mistake, actually. Cosmo Zooms, if you like this book, then you can uh, Take it out from the library. I keep forgetting to look up at the camera and not myself, so I apologize if I wasn't looking at you the whole time. <laughs> All right. I have a lot of great things that I put in your bag this week. Hopefully you had a chance to pick it up. It is the art project that I usually always include. It's a gravity spinner toy. These are the instructions that are in your bag. And it is really, really fun. So just, if you hold it up and down, then your toy spins. Gravity pulls it down. And it spins too because of the pennies on there. The, the weight of it brings it down and spins it around. So if you want to make this, and it's just almost therapeutic. You might even want to like play with it and turn it up and down for hours. My wire lost its coils a little bit, but you could always fix it. So it's a little bit more curvy for, the, for it to spin a little bit more. But I find that it helps to make it spin when you pull up and down on the little handles. So you've got a piece of wire 
in your bag. Just be careful because the ends can be a little bit pointy and could poke you. So have mom and dad help you. It has a natural spring in it already because of the way we coiled it up in the bag. But if you want to curl it around a broomstick like the instructions say and make it a little more curly, you can do that. But I made little loops, I don't know whether you can see, just little circles on each end to be handles where you can kind of put your hands. So you can see there's little circles on each end. So when you're done with shaping your wire the way that you want it to be, just put that aside. And then you take out, I gave you all a straw. I have all different colors here. You all have got a different color. So this is what's going to be needed. And also your copies, I give you many choices. You all have, hard to see, a little bit of a glare. But I gave you lots of different copies of rockets. Just make sure you pick two of the same kind. I guess you don't really have to have two of the same kind. You can have two different ones if you want. That could make it fun too. But I think because of the balance, just in case, you can always test it out. You can make more than one if you have you know, wire at home and more straws and things like that, you can test it out. But with the balance, it might be better to pick two of the same. And then I took my crayons and I colored in two of the rockets and then cut them out with scissors. And then after you cut them out, you want to take some tape and two pennies. You want to tape the pennies onto the center of each rocket on the back where it's white, not the colored part, just so you can see the, the colors of the rockets on one side and the taped pennies in the center of the rockets on the other side. Then I got, well actually it's included in your bag too. We have plenty of these around here in the library. A very large paper clip. You can see it better if I put it on near my sweater. And then we taped that to the middle of the straw. It has to be the middle. You want to try to tape it on there so it stays put. And then you tape your rockets to the straw on each end. Just make sure it's all secure and, and stays. You can test it out that nothing is moving and that the paper clip is in the center and not moving either. And then you simply thread the paper clip onto the wire and then it will stay on there, it won't fall off. And start it at the top, it doesn't matter if it falls a little bit. But then you can practice having gravity work with your gravity spinner toy. <clears throat> Excuse me, gravity spinner toy. Very fun. I think it makes it even more fun that it's a craft that you made, plus it's a toy, and you're doing science at the same time. Triple fun. You're doing art, making a toy, your own toy, and doing science. So fun. I hope you like it. So that's the art part of this presentation. Now we're going to do a science experiment. It might not be very easy to see what I'm doing on video, but you have all of this stuff at home and it's a very large bowl and make sure you fill it all with water, the tippy top, if you can, without it really spilling out. And you need a small cup. So you put the small cup, I have many different sizes here, but you put the small cup into the bowl and make sure that it's completely covered with water, that it fills up with water and it's completely underwater. 
And then you turn the cup over, upside down. So the water is still in there. And then you'll feel it as you start to lift the cup up slowly, but don't take it completely out of the water yet. You'll feel that you're defying gravity. There's air pressure in there that keeps the water in all the way until you lift it up out of the water. You'll feel it. So fun to kind of play with gravity in this way. And then as soon as you lift it up, it's amazing. You can feel that the water is still in, but then as soon as you lift it out, as soon as the lip, did you see the water come crashing back into the bowl? It's very fun. You can do it over and over again. And you get the feel of it. I know it says in your instructions too about blue food coloring. I didn't have any at home. So no worries, you probably see it better. If you put a little blue food coloring in there, you can actually see the water because since the bowl is clear, and the cup is clear and the water is clear, it's a little hard to see that the water really is in there. You could feel it. You could feel it and then also see it come crashing out of the cup, but maybe you might want to add a little blue food coloring in there so you can actually see how it gets suctioned into the cup. It's very, very fun. I hope you have fun doing science with simple things around your house too. There's so many other things that you can do. I love Pinterest, as you know, I'm a big fan. So if you wanna look up any other simple science experiments that have to do with gravity or anything else, then you can do that too. It'd be really fun to do that at home. Now let me move back over here again. Because the last thing that I had in activity idea that I had inside of your bags is a marble run. If you have marbles at home, this is such a fun project. My husband and I actually worked on this together a couple of years ago, and I've kept it ever since. And it is completely made out of, I have instructions in your bags too, for the water experiment, I forgot to show, and also for the paper plate marble track if you want to do this activity. But basically we found a piece of cardboard and we cut it into like a, it's kind of a square, but a little lopsided. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we took leftover toilet paper rolls and cut it in different pieces. Like see, some of them are very, very tiny and some of them are regular size and some are half the size. And then we went really crazy. We actually like put holes inside one of them, you can see, to kind of get the paper plate track to go inside it. We went a little fancy. You don't even need to go that fancy. We just cut the paper plates, the centers out, and then the outside of the plates kind of turn into natural ramps. And then we kind of taped or glued things together. I used hot glue because that will stand the test of time. <laughs> and if it breaks, then you could always re-glue it again. But I wanted to show you how it worked. The color part of the paper plates, after we tested it out with the marbles, we hot glued these onto the sides too so it would keep the marble from falling off. If you need guardrails, the colored part of the paper plates are pretty sturdy. It can't be just the regular paper plates that don't have the color on them. I think these are Dixie. You could try whatever you want, but oh, I might have even had this come loose. I hope that it still works. Let's see. We're going to test it out. So you get a couple of marbles. Hopefully I didn't just ruin that. Let's see. I might have to get a little tape on there. That's why you have tape. Get this stay a little bit better. So it will 
to continue to roll. But yes, again, I made this marble track to show the power of gravity because gravity always pulls things down. So when things are at an angle and sloped down, the power of gravity will pull the marble around and keep it in motion and have it go down and around the track. So let's see if this works. Ah. Manipulate it a little bit so it doesn't fall off the track. If we need another guardrail over here. I'll try it again. Ready? Ah! All right, maybe I'll hold it up. We'll get it to go. There we go. It's really fun when you do two at the same time. I'll hold up this part again since it needs a little work. Maybe we need to put another toilet paper roll on here, under here, to hold it up a little bit more. But let's see if we can do two at a time. Yay, it worked. You could try three or four. It's really fun. So that is the marble run, and hopefully you have, you know, the patience and the time, like if you need a project at home, it's a very fun family thing to do. And then it's so worth it and so fun to play with the marbles in this way and see gravity work. So I hope that you had a great time watching my video, and welcome back to story time. We're going to be back again next week. Um, cold weather always reminds me of comfort food, so we're going to do soup next week. The soup will be on. So I hope you tune in next week and yeah, have a great week and we'll see you on video and hopefully in the library very soon. Goodbye everybody.